it would be it would be great to see your beautiful faces it's not for me it's not interesting to talk to the black holes or the black squares if you are if you just switch on your cameras for a moment and say hello to each other just showing respect oh thank you very much oh i feel i feel much better now you see the human you see the human faces oh katerina wow sarah welcome okay nushin oh ella diego oh what a lovely people uh can i Veronica, can can we start? Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now we have a permission from the chair to start. And before before I come to my presentation, I just want to say something about the the school, this idea of the of summer school, uh, this activity we are doing now together. So, well, I know people are very exhausted uh, after first day. There was very intensive discussions. There were very intensive, lot of information, lot of new knowledge and people feel very tired and sometimes maybe disappointed. But please don't forget, the idea of this summer school is to initiate a discussion, just to seed, it, take it as a seeding plant. We are here building a community of researchers. Now we know each other. You can continue discussing things through emails, through Facebook, you can create your own Facebook group if you like, or Instagram or Telegram. So, and this is the idea of the, of the summer school. We are here not to give the answer to your questions. We are he here to give you some directions to go, to think, to find the answer to your research questions. And that's why don't feel that you are out of order. Don't feel that you are so exhausted and you don't understand. No, 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 not at all everything goes okay this is the idea to open the door but when the door open you should come to the room through the door okay so this is take it as a starting point okay uh, uh, well the second the second point i want to, to start with is that uh, my presentation today uh, will be like this i will take my one hour and a half time for presenting for giving to you the uh, my presentation but there will be no breakout rooms there will be no discussions because the material material dictates i need really one one hour and a half to explain everything i want to explain to give you a complete picture not to jump superficially but to go as deep as I can. But if you have questions and commentaries, if you want to discuss, I ask you, dear colleagues, please, tomorrow we have a slot in the program called Topic by Demand, Nikolai. I will be more than happy to discuss all your questions during that time. If you need an individual face-to-face -face consultation, how to apply uh, this methodology to you to your research. So there is an option called one on one individual consultations for tomorrow. If you see in the program, you will see. So just sign in and we will meet and we will discuss how these uh, principles might be used in your research. I'm very sorry for that, but uh, well, as you say, the material dictates the method, right? <laughs> so that's why <laughs> the material I wanted to share with you. So um, uh, doesn't give me any opportunity to change the way I'm going to present, okay? Are you okay with this? Okay, so the topic is cultural historical genetic research methodology, GRM how can it inform research in education or discovering cultural historical methodology for research and education and uh, just to clarify the point in my presentation i will not discuss social cultural theory i don't believe that there is a social cultural theory at all but it's not about that 
It's not about cultural historical activity theory, chat. I'm not touching chat. We have Uriel as a chat expert. We have uh, Joss, not me. I'm not. So I'm not going to touch the activity theory, Leon, here. So I will focus on, I will focus on Vygotsky's cultural historical theory and cultural historical research methodology. I will show you this methodology, this method, and I will give you some examples of the concrete research I was involved, how these principles work in research programs, mostly done by my PhD students. If you want to know more, in the readings, in the readings, in the folder of readings, there is a paper I wrote specially for you, especially for this event, which is called Cultural Historical Research Methodology. So please read and you will find some other examples there. The examples I'm going to present here might be not in that paper. So the combination with the paper and my presentation might give you a kind of uh, more or less uh, holistic picture about what about the topic. Are you okay with this? I'm sorry, I'm experiencing COVID and that's why maybe my speech is not good enough. Uh, are you okay? Uh, uh, can you hear me well? Is my speech, yeah. is my speech okay? Can I speak okay. faster or slower? Nic Nicola, can I just comment that you've got actually two hours rather than an hour and a half? Ah, two yeah. hours. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I will uh, then try to make it in one hour and a half and then half an hour for discussion for questions. Please use chat then. And Veronica kindly agreed uh, to uh, monitor the chat. And if there are questions in chat, uh, Veronica will collect all the questions. And if we have no time to answer today, we will continue answering the questions tomorrow on the time slot called, uh, well, topic by demand. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, Two hours is even more than one and a half. Okay. Uh, but before I come to the topic, I just want to share some reflections about, or refractions. Look, refraction is much, much better word, right? Because reflection is a mirror. Refraction is a kind of prism, So, uh, uh, I love all yesterday's presentations. Uh, Joss was brilliant. Uh, uh, Eugene was brilliant. Uh, Uriel, they were great, 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 great researchers. But uh, as we are researchers and we are scholars, we have to be, um, how to say, not critical, but uh, have to be objective. And uh, my first point is that I was slightly surprised when I heard that Vygotsky's social cultural theory is positivistic, is a pos positivism. So my understanding of Vygotsky is that Vygotsky was not a positivist at all, because Vygotsky's point was to study the process of development of higher psychological functions, applying dialectical method, dialectics of development, which is absolutely opposite to any positivist interpretation. There is nobody who is far from positivism than Vygotsky. Even more, Vygotsky was very critical to any positivistic approach in psychology. And if you look at volume one, you will find the book, Historical Meaning of Psychological Crisis, you will find a lot of critical uh, passages of from Vygotsky, uh, uh, which he addresses to positivism. Of course, he called it empiricism, but empiric empiricism and positivism are just, it's not the same, but very close. So that's why uh, I was a little bit surprised, but um, I love Eugene and I love dialogic pedagogy. That's why I was uh, just trying to hide myself yesterday. Well, Joss was fantastic and I, I really enjoyed enjoyed. Uh, and of course, we all agree that generation model doesn't work. Generation model does not reflect the reality. And even Joss agrees with that. And also Joss agrees that chat has a lot of gaps, which she thinks might 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 be fixed. I think but should not be fixed. It's impossible. But this is the only difference between us. So 
uh, uh, Uriel. Uriel is a superstar. Uriel Engstrom. Oh, everybody knows Engstrom. Work, work. But I was a little bit surprised about his presentation because uh, he tried to explain two, funda two fundamental principles. Do you remember his presentation? He said there are two fundamental principles. First, the principle of ascending from the abstract to the concrete. And the second principle of principle of double stimulation. Am I right? Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not misreading, no? That's what Yuri said yesterday? Yes. Well, but um, my, I have a couple of objections. First of all, ascending from the abstract to the concrete is not the principle. It is not a principle at all. In dialectics, Hegel, Marx, and Ilyenkov, it is considered as a method of thinking, method of cognition, not the principle, but the method. And you understand the difference between the method and the principle. Okay, the way we, may, we organize the process of cognition and the principle according something operates. Okay, and even in Ilyenkov's work, and Urio is referring, make a reference to Ilyenkov. So you can see on the screen that Ilyenkov speaks about from abstract to concrete as a method of cognition, not a principle. Okay. So then the second principle is the principle of double stimulation. Well, I have a long debate with uh, my friend Annalisa Sanino about double stimulation. So uh, my point is that double stimulation is not a principle at all. Double stimulation is a concrete experimental technique, experimental setting in Russian methodica for studying the process of development of higher psychological functions through introducing a second stimuli a sign or, or whatever the child the child or adult can use to organize his or her high psychological functions in a cultural way this is not a principle this is a, just a concrete experimental technique nothing more and here is a quotation from vygotsky the active intervention of men in the situation by introducing a new stimuli. When he introduces or she introduces a new stimuli or when somebody introduces a new stimuli to him or to her. That's it. I don't know why for my friend Annalisa, it's a principle. I'm sure you understand the difference between the principle and the concrete experimental technique we use Okay, and yeah, I agree that Vygotsky used double stimulation to study the development of will. That's true, that's absolutely correct. But if you look at six volumes of Vygotsky's work, if you read carefully, if you do a little bit of deep reading about that, you will see that Vygotsky makes references to the research based on the method or technique of double stimulation in researching the development of will, also in researching of development of attention, also in researching of development of memory. Because the first big experimental study of Leontiev under the Vygotsky supervision was the cultural historical study of memory using experimental technique of double stimulation. I don't know what's the reason Yuria didn't mention this, and it might be kind of mis kind of picture that double stimulation is also is only related to the development of will. This is not true. Okay, so uh, but these are our theoretical debates, our theoretical discussions and reflections, and and so on. And don't take it as a, as a poor criticism. And 
Well, we are all friends and we respect each other. So I'm just opening the, uh, this opportunity for you to, when you are listening, even superstar, uh, please double check, okay? Please think yourself, think, look at this, is, is this really this or, or not? So we have to be self-critical. Uh, and we have to know the resources. Yeah. Deep reading helps. Okay, so, but my topic is not the crit criticism of, of my co colleagues. My topic is Vygotsky's method, cultural, historical research methodology or experimental genetic method. By doing this, I'm continuing our deep reading. Do you remember the paragraph you did yesterday? That the new area, new area of research requires a new method and developing of the theory and method goes parallel. Okay, that's what Vygotsky says. And I'm going to present what is cultural historical research method or experimental genetic method and how it might work in a concrete research programs which I was involved. Also, will be, uh, I will try to, to show you what kind of research questions we can formulate, what kind of new research questions can we formulate uh, uh, if we are doing a research uh, um, following Vygotsky's cultural, historical, theoretical, and methodological requirements. Uh, well, these are several publications about the method and the principles. Uh, my presentation today will be based on these, but if you are interested to know more, you can just, they all are available. And if you cannot find, just let me know and I will send you a free copy. <laughs> okay, so now coming to the point. Uh, so does it look familiar? Who is doing in early childhood? Who has, who has a son or a daughter or grandchildren in early childhood? Yeah, this is what they call development, right? Yeah, developmental milestones. So if you want to study development, child development, this is the matrix, no problem. If the child can walk or eye contact or says, say mama, papa, or not, if, if yes, it's okay. If not, there is a developmental delay uh, and a problem. So I don't want to discuss this, but I'm just showing you, you the typical, traditional, very positivistic approach to understanding the child development, yeah? But Vygotsky speaks about development in a very different way. I hope you can read. Look at this. Vygotsky repeats several times, repeats here, that development is a complex process and dialectical process. You see, complex dialectical process by a complex periodicity, disproportion, metamorphosis or qualitative transformations of certain form, uh, the process of evolution, involution, a complex crossing of external and internal factor, a complex process of overcoming difficulties and adapting. Complex, complex process, complex, complex, complex. He just sending this as a telegram, please, please, complex process, complex process, dialectical, deep dialectical, uh, disproportion, periodicity, metamorphosis, qualitative reorganization, uh, but uh, so despite this telegram, people still are thinking about development in, in terms of milestones, okay? So complex dialectical process. So the study of development is not easy if we want to disclose the dialectical character of development, but not easy doesn't mean impossible because new field of research, new area of research requires 
a new method. If our task is to discover the dialectical complexity of the process of development, we have to develop, well, we have to seek and develop the appropriate <laughs> method to study this process, dialectical process of development of child. Okay. That's what uh, I'm going to talk about. Genetic research methodology. Genetic doesn't mean genes. It's not about biology. Genetic comes from the word genesis. Genesis. And genesis is development. So don't take it biologically, please. So take it genetically in a sense that it's discovers the gen genesis. Okay. And this is a genetic research because it provides, provides us with the special specific experimental tools to do a research. And this is a methodology because it includes concepts and principles, theory and method. Theory and method go together. So that's Vygotsky's definition of the method, experimental genetic method. Let's make a deep reading here. Are you okay to make a little bit of deepening? <laughs> the method we use may be called an experimental genetic method in the sense that it artificially elicits and creates a genetic process of mental development. Due to this, we are able experimentally in the laboratory to elicit a certain development. So this, this is the method when we create a special situation, special conditions for the children, we provide them the special settings. And in these settings, we see how, how the micro development, the micro changes are happening. And we, we are organizing the process, develop, the process of development experimentally and even artificially, if you like. And this is the method Vygotsky suggests. Of course, here genet gen genetic is a social cultural genesis. So, and this is a new method, which is called experimental genetic method. We, uh, about, uh, well, Yuria was speaking a little bit yesterday, but what kind of challenges it brings to education research? Because we are, oh, most of us are not doing psychology some of some of us are psychologists but most of us are doing the education well how can we adopt the psychological method to education that's a question and to answer this question let's go a little bit deeper to the point so the new method Experimental genetic method gives us uh, opportunities, some new interesting opportunities. If myself or every or anyone as a researcher is applying this method to the research, this method helps us to, to move from studying the existing psychological structures of functions, how they look, for example, child's memory, how the child memorizes or child thinking, how child analyzes or the child's uh, memory, how, how, uh, how the memory works. So coming from the existing to study the process of the appearance and construction. So in other words, uh, I might ask, how the memory of the of the of the of this chart looks like? Okay, it looks like this and this and this. But using the genetic method, I might find the answer. Why the memory of this chart is looking like this? Why the memory of this chart works this way but not that way? Not how it works, and but why it works like this? and not like that. 
Okay. So then the second point is that this method allows me research uh, to come from the descriptive analysis to explanatory analysis. So explanatory. So I'm not describing the, 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 the phenomena. I'm analyzing how this phenomena is related to, 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 to some other phenomena and why, what is the causal dynamic relations between that. So from description to explanation. And this is a really, really important because I can describe a lot of things, but without understanding. But if I want to understand, I have to understand why it looks like this, okay? So, and the third point, which is for me, it's most interesting is that this method allows me, a researcher, when I have a data collected, when I have data collected to, uh, to distinguish between things which might look similar, but they are different by their nature, by their origins. Or it might help me to find things which look differently, but they are similar by their nature, structure, and construction. So it helps me not to make a mistake of uh, making a patterns on the, on the criteria of similarity. Not, not everything which looks similar is the same. Sometimes things, are, things look similar, but they have a different nature because they have different origins. They have different history and a story behind them. So, these are three important and very, very valuable, valuable uh, opportunities uh, which uh, the genetic research methodology, uh, cultural, historical genetic research methodology gives us. No other method in psychology, in contemporary psychology, gives, provides with such an opportunity. Okay. So I will show you how it works in practice. I'm sorry for being too, too the theoretical, but methodology should be a little bit of theoretical, right? Okay. So, research strategy. How it works in research. This is actually what my PhD students are doing. And I'm looking at Samran, who is here. Samran is, my, is one of my PhD students. And the first year one of the study, was it year, the whole year one, Samran, yeah? So year one. So uh, uh, we, we are making together a lot of deep readings of the theory in order to find the theoretical concepts, theoretical concepts, which we will use as analytical tools for our PhD research. For example, Samran is doing research on the private speech, and he has selected several important concepts, theoretical concepts, which Samran is now using as an analytical tool, theoretical analytical tool to analyze the data he collected. Okay, so that's one, that's task one. And task two is that researchers should do a research, a research project. So, and we had a discussion with Samran about what kind of, what kind, what principles of genetic research methodology, principles of organizing the concrete experimental study Samran might take to make his research really based on Vygotsky's method how to use the general method, experimental genetic method, took the concrete research of development of private speech of second language English learners, multilingual, uh, of multilingual, yes, it's multilingual, something like that, multilingual in, uh, well, in uh, Iran, okay? So these are the tasks. And at the end of the year one, Samran has a set, a system of theoretical concepts, which makes his theoretical framework. 
and the principles of organizing his experimental study, which is his methodological framework. And these things are going together. There is absolutely consistency between theoretical tools and experimental tools. And there is no gap between. Because a new area of research requires a new method. So they cannot be separated. We are just following the paragraph we have read yesterday. Okay. So this is about how to make research coherent. This is about how your theoretical framework and methodological framework fit each other and together create your methodological and uh, theoretical, theoretical methodological framework, which is what Vygotsky was speaking about. I'm looking at Sharon. Sharon, are you here? Huh? Yeah. Do you remember, Sharon, you said that, that this is, should be a mediated. Oh, no, it was not Sharon. Sorry, Sharon. It was uh, somebody said it. The Vygotsky didn't say that we have to apply dialectics directly. We need to build an intermediate, intermediate uh, theories methodologies. This is the case. Okay. Ooh. And these are five principles of organizing uh, experimental study based on Vygotsky's cultural, historical research methodology uh, or experimental genetic method. Uh, I have developed these principles based on Vygotsky's work. Sometimes they call it various of principles, but they are not various of principles, they are Vygotsky's principles. Well, uh, and my task was just to provide the researchers, especially early career researchers who are just starting to do research in the Vygotsky's field, to make sure that they are doing experiment correctly, to make sure that they are, their experimental study really is really, um, is really uh, meet the requirement of uh, experimental genetic method how to apply the method to context. So, and I have published several times the, the, the descriptions of these principles, uh, but now uh, as I still have a couple of, about one hour, uh, I will just present each of these principles separately, if you, if you like, uh, with the examples of the research uh, I was involved. Are you okay with this? Or, or we need uh, five minutes uh, five minutes short break. Hey, people. Yeah, if you need a break, maybe put up your hand. We know. Yeah, whether. Please. Uh, yeah, please. Just say, up. say something. <laughs> it's fine if you want a break. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That would be good. Okay, Diego, thank you, Diego. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Okay, so the first principle, uh, this is the principle which I call the principle of bods of development. You might find it metaphorical, but this is not my metaphor. This is your Vygotsky's metaphor. So, and When we, when we deal with children at any age, early childhood, primary, secondary, psychologically in a child, there are psychological functions which are already developed and they, they are developed functions. They, they, they finish their psychological development. They are, and there are functions which are not yet developed, but they are in the process, active process of development. And there are some uh, psychological functions which are just in the, in the embryonic stage and in the beginning of development. That's a very interesting uh, kind of, uh, well, um, situation. For example, in a preschool child, memory is very well developed uh, quite often, but uh, conceptual thinking is not. So children have a good memory. They can memorize a lot, 
preschool, I mean, I mean the first the first year before school, but uh, uh, the abstract thinking and conceptual thinking is not yet developed, definitely. Or maybe just a little bit of it. So, and this is interesting. This is an interesting tree, you know, that in the tree there are fruit, fruit and flowers and 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 buds at the same time. Okay. And Vygotsky said that, that uh, metaphorically they could be defined buds, flowers, and fruit of development, uh, which are which which is the metaphor I love. Okay, so. And what does it mean? What does it mean? It means that as as if you're as a researcher and a teacher or a parent or whatever, or pedologist, if you focus on those uh, functions which are already developed, uh, that's a good point. But you will never have a true picture and complete representation uh, if you are not taken into account the buds, because the buds will, will become flowers and fruits tomorrow. And they are not as uh, less important than the fruit. But if you are a teacher who is doing teaching and learning process, process and a teacher who wants the learning to provide the conditions for development of the child, of course, it's important for you to know which functions are not yet developed and what kind of learning we can, or what kind of teaching teaching, learning, what kind of abuchenia we can provide to support the development of these psychological functions which are not yet developed, which are in the process of development, which are in the bad stage. Okay. I think it's a very, very strong metaphor of the garden. Huh? So, but the question is very simple. If my task as a researcher or as a teacher or as a pedologist or as a parent is to support the development of buds into the fruits, my first question is, where are the buds? Where are those buds of development? Where can I find them? Huh? When I ask this question uh, to Bigotskians, they say, oh, where are the buds? I say, yeah, where are the buds of development? Those functions who are, which are the bud stage, fruit are in a, in a, in a child's mind. A developed memory belongs to the child. It's a child's developed memory. It's a fruit of development, which is located in his mind. Okay, but where are the buds? Are they within the child? No, they are not in the child. They, the, bud, the buds of development, the buds of development exist in, outside the child. They exist in a, in, a, in, a, in a sphere of relationships and interactions and cooperations with others. They are distributed between the child and other people. Why? Why? Because of the general genetic law. General genetic law of development, of cultural development speaks. Every function in cultural development of the child appears on the stage twice. First, it appears between people as an interpsychological category. Then it appears within the child as an intra-psychological category. First, it, it appears as a bud, and then the bud grows and becomes the flower and the fruit. So the buds exist in a, not in the child, but in the field of child's interaction with us. And this is important principle, which helped me a researcher, if my study is, if my Research question is to analyze the process of development of certain psych psychological function. My question might be to find where are the buds of these functions? Are there any buds of this function in the child 
interactions. And how then I can have this bud to become a flower or a fruit during my experimental study. Okay. Well, and now I show you an example of how we how we discovered how we did find the bud of development of some of something. So I want to introduce to you my colleagues, the colleagues I did this research with. It's um, uh, Dr. Mary Hammer, my colleague from Monash, and Dr. Victoria Minson, who was my PhD student, but now she's Dr. Minson. She works in different university. I think, I think she works in Catholic University, right? Yeah. So, and we did a research about uh, zone of proximal development, but I, I'm not going to touch this topic. I will, um, I will introduce you the, the girl called Eve. So, uh, <clears throat> this is from the experimental study. You see, it's a show and tell, show and tell experience, and the task for Eve was to present something through show and tell. Show and tell is a very typical Australian experience with children. They, they bring something from home, the toy, and then they have to tell a story, to show the toy and tell the story. And you see, uh, Eve was absolutely not great. She could not tell a, a story about monkey, even though the teacher tried to support her. She was confused, so she could not tell a story. So. And that was the that was the situation. That was the initial situation. This is experimental, also the same situation. So we see, oh, the girl cannot tell a story about the monkey, feeling sad. What might be the problem? It might be a speech development problem, right? Yeah. It might be a, might be memory, because so it might be communication problems, or might be inter even intellectual delays. What might be the reason that the girl at this age is not able to tell the story about monkey? Might be a million reasons for that. Okay. But for us cultural historical researchers, what is important is not, not just to make a diagnosis of what is bad with this girl. <laughs> But to look, where are the buds of development? Are there any opportunities which we might help, we, we might use to help Eve to develop the ability to tell a story? Not only about monkey, but about everything. So, and the first question was to find out, are there any buds? And there are. We made a one week observation of Eve's interactions with other children, with the teachers. And we were surprised because Eve is such an interactive girl. She has a life experience. She can tell her stories. She can discuss, she can tell long stories. But now the question is why being able to tell these stories, she is unable to tell this story. What's the difference between these situations and this situation? And the principle of buds of development helps us to understand the difference. And the difference is that this is the story if creates in cooperation with others, in a dialogue, in a discussion. When we ask questions, they answer the questions. She asks the questions. Answer. So this is a story collectively created. So she is fine in telling stories when the stories are is and the story is collected uh, in cooperation, collaboration, in interaction. So her ability to tell a story is in a bad stage, not in the fruit stage but in the bad stage. And this is how the principle works. This principle shows us, shows us not to focus on the problem of the individual child. It gives me opportunity to see, to find something in the child which might, which is not uh, available here, but quite available here. 
it gives me a, a tool okay we will come to we will come to eve later today a little bit later so we are not saying goodbye to Eve. I'm just giving to give you, uh, I'm going to give you another example. So this is another page, the history of money. Voila, Mandili. And I promised to somebody yesterday, to one of the participants to share this. So her, her topic was uh, uh, in Saudi Arabia, in Saudi uh, prim primary schools, the problem was that the children having interesting English classes <laughs> Uh, they, uh, they, the English uh, does not develop, so they still are unable to use English. So uh, language proficiency doesn't grow, and that was the challenging task. And uh, the uh, theoretical background of for, for Mavala was that. Um, I know the linguists are against that, but psychologists would agree that there are two different things. Language acquisition, language acquisition, when we learn foreign languages, foreign language, in classrooms, through dictionaries, through communication, and speech development. Language and speech is not the same. Language is a system of cultural science which exists. For example, English language exists for centuries and people use language as a tool to communicate huh? language is not a high psychological function or process and what is high psychological function speech we are speaking to each other communicating using different languages we can use english russian or the language of deaf people we had experience demonic okay this is one of the mistakes of, uh, of um, people who are uh, who don't, don't understand the separation between language and speech speech as an individual psychological function and the problem is when children learn english they learn language but teachers does not provide any opportunity to support the development of english speech of children they know english words they know english phrases but this is not enough because they need text they need the practices of communication in this language using this language in their speech to communicate in other in other words teachers should provide the opportunities for the children to for the bud of buzz of development of english speech to appear if there is no communication, there are, there are no buds for English speech. And therefore, if there are no buds, there will be no fruit. At the end of the day, children will know language, but we will be not able to use their language for their speech. So this is what Vala discovered. And these are typical methods of teaching English. As you know, pictures, um, CDs, drawings, uh, whiteboards, blackboards, smart boards. And so on and so on and so on. But what is interesting is, is this is the example. This is the only example how uh, the how the interaction process of the teacher and the child was organized. This is from teacher's interview. You see. This is an example of the communication in English, which is outside of the, of the class topics. And this is the only one time when teacher created the conditions for the blood of development of English speech of your children to appear, but not in the classroom. They learn English words, they learn English songs, they learn 
they 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 thrill and thrill and thrill and drill and drill and drill but the real communication in english happens so seldom and therefore it's if it's seldom so there are no conditions nothing supports the development of english speech nothing supports the development of english speech and if there is no support of development of english speech there will be no development of english speech because speech develops through communication from social speech in communication then to private speech and then to internal speech and then to thinking and the highest level of proficiency in english is ability to think in this language and this opportunity is absolutely closed because in the classroom practices communication is limited and that was one of the problems Vala um, discovered in her study and uh, now she is working in Saudi Arabia in the Ministry of Education and I hope she is responsible for the um, educational reforms to Saudi and very soon we will see how your ideas will be introduced in the classroom practices in Saudi Arabia, at least I hope. Okay, so this is the first principle, the principle of buzz of development. So it means that when we are doing experimental study, we have to, we have to identify these functions which are at the buzz stage. Because uh, if, if the psychological function, memory or thinking or, or, or volition or perception are on the fruit stage, so we cannot make a development because it's a fruit. <laughs> so we have to find the function which are the bud stage or the flower stage. So because it doesn't make any sense to organize things. So so we have to we have to be very carefully finding. We have to we need to find the the field where the function exists in the bud stage. And this field is not in child's mind and it's a child's immediate interactions with others. So this is a kind of uh, summary of the principle of bond of development. So the second principle, sometimes they call it the principle of category, but better to say principle of collision or dramatic event. So uh, contradiction is a moving force for development. Dialectical opposites create a unity and a contradiction. I'm not going to discuss today what is the difference between non-dialectical contradiction and dialectical contradiction. But if you, if you love, we can discuss it later. But what is important is that when there is no contradiction, when there is no dramatic collisions, there is no development. And these two quotations from Vygotsky support this. It's not what I'm saying. It's, this is what Vygotsky said. So the, one of the basic principles of experiment is experimental unfolding of a higher mental process into the drama that occurs among people, okay? So the basic principle of higher psychological functions is the interaction of functions in place of interaction between people. They can be most fully developed in a form of drama. Dramatic collision, dramatic collision is important uh, component of any developmental process. Uh, and in our experimental studies, uh, we artificially create some dramatic collisions for children, or we find uh, their dramatic collisions, uh, small crises in their lives, in their, their everyday settings. That's also possible. But this is important because these moments are the most interesting moments, which gives me as a researcher the opportunity to look at how the process of reorganization happens, because through drama, children overcome the drama and they create a new quality. This is how the qualitative reorganization happens. This is very philosophical. This is very dialectical, of course. But what we do with Vygotsky, we are trying to disclose the dialectics of development. And therefore, the, co the concept of drama is so important. Well, uh, the dramatic event is a primary form in which the high psychological functions appear as a social relation. 
So if I want the high psychological function to develop, this is my task to create a kind of situation when it appears first. Do you remember? Every function appears on the stage twice. First, it appears between. So my task is to create a condition when it will appear first, because first it should appear between the people, and then it should it will appear inside the child. The only way the function to appear in, inside the child is first to appear between the child and the social environment. And this is my point. This is what, as a researcher, I can do. I create through play, role play, or any kind of experimental situation. I create a situation when the child experiencing a dramatic contradiction and collision, and then I give the child the way to overcome. And therefore, I'm designing this first uh, inter-psychological stage and or level or phase of whatever okay well i will show you a couple of examples because uh, there are uh, two ways first way is just to um, not to create a special dramatic event but just to look at the um, child's everyday life and find or not only child's but adults everyday life and find some contradic contradictory dramatic moments well okay coming back to eve yeah. okay so and that was a really the, the dramatic moment. Yeah, it's a drama. You can see from from your face that she experienced that very emotional, dramatic collision because she's a leader. You know, she she she's so active. But in this situation, she feels she, she cannot do the task. And this is really the drama she experiences. Uh, but the second example is from a research of my colleague Fabiana, Fabiana Nascucci. She was a sandwich program student from Brazil visiting Australia a couple of years ago. And she did a research about adults. And this is about adults and it's about school psychologists. She did a kind of uh, professional development for school psychologists in Brazil, but instead of giving them the typical lectures and seminars, she rearranged the whole, the whole process. She invited them to bring their stories, especially their dramatical, dramatical con, con, conflictual stories from their field into the classroom. And she wanted them to share their stories. Of course, they were against that because nobody wants to share bad stories, but uh, she said that this is the principle and then she, they, they wrote a, a diaries at first they were they were they were shocked because they didn't expect this kind of situation to happen uh, but discussing these stories going from one from one story to another they they created a inter 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 psychological uh, situations and then uh, through the series of conflicts and dramas and contradictions, the participants came to a deep, better understanding of their role as a school psychologist. And these are the uh, examples from the diaries. Uh, you can read here, it's very interesting reflect, reflection. Uh huh. You see how differently, how differently the school psychologists begin to think about themselves. This is how the this is how the dramatic collision war. Uh, specially created for this group of school, school psychologists by the researcher and uh, as an experimental condition. 
So, summary. This principle orients the researcher, I mean the principle of collision, orients the researcher to look at practices, to look at interactions, to look at the social environments, micro-social environments, micro-social situations of development, in order to identify those moments, uh, social collisions, dramatic events, uh, which might be the turning points for their developmental trajectories. This might be real life situations. Remember, remember your life. Uh, everybody here have a story, stories of dramatic collisions and events in our life. Yeah. And these moments of, of our life were most important moments because of these dramatic collisions and events, we are, we were becoming different. Huh? These events changed us, changed our way of life, way of thinking, way of feeling, helped us to understand things better, to avoid some misunderstandings we had. Think about your life. And these moments, love, friendship, betray. So these are dialectically the most important moments in our life, which really initiated the radical changes. Not often, not all of them, but sometimes. So, uh, but in our research with children or with adults, we can especially engineer these moments uh, uh, because only through these moments we can create the interpsychological uh, um, stage of development. So we are creating the conditions for bonds to appear. Okay, so um, there are some examples, for example, uh, dramatic story narratives and fairy tales and play worlds and so on and so on. Okay, well, the principle of interaction of ideal and primary forms. This is very interesting Vygotsky's conception, which unfortunately is not as known as well known as ZPD, for example. But, uh, but uh, this is an example of what ideal and present form is. The example is very simple. When the mom is speaking, communicating with her baby using speech. Syntactically, grammatically developed speech. To the baby. And if you come to this mom and say, oh, why are you speaking to, to the, this small Nikolai baby? He doesn't understand what you are saying. If you say this to the mom, the mom will be very angry. And she will say, no, Nikola understands. <laughs> yeah. Of course, Nikola does not understand. But what is important for the baby is the baby to listen developed speech of mom. And through this interaction of developed speech of mom in communicating with the baby, day by day, month by month, year by year, producing his own speech, the child the child begins to speak more and more and more. Only through interaction of ideal form. Ideal form doesn't mean the best form. Ideal form means the developed form, which is presented and the mom is a carrier. And through this interaction, this is the only way how um, child develops his or her speech, okay? And Vygotsky says that this is the most important, the greatest peculiarity of the child development is that development, the child development goes through interaction of ideal and 
final and and real, well, not real, but uh, primary forms. And this is very interesting principle because it helps me, a researcher, to formulate my research question. For example, if my if I want to um, if I want to make a study of learning environment of um, university students, how learning environment of university students support their intellectual development. It might be an interesting topic, right? right? So, okay, yeah, learning environment. I want to understand what kind of learning environment it should be to support the student's intellectual development. And what might be the way to collect the data? How can I, how can I, how can I analyze the learning environment? What are the criteria? Might be millions of ways, right? But one of the ways might be using the principle of the interaction of ideal and present forms. For example, I might formulate my research question this way. What are the ideal forms, developed forms of thinking, which are presented in the learning environment? And how these ideal forms presented in the learning environment interact with, with the students' forms of thinking? Which makes learning environment a source of development of students' abstract thinking. I'm looking at learning environment as a mm, from the special angle, from the special point of view of how many, how strong are the ideal forms given to the students. Okay, it gives me a opportunity to analyze the learning environment from the point of view of ideal forms which are given to the child or to the students to support their intellectual development. And how learning environment gives uh, opportunity to interact, how the students can develop their thinking through interacting with these ideal forms. Okay, so, it's, a, it's applicable to adults, it's applicable to children. It gives me the glasses, it gives me the, 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 the microscope <laughs> to, look at, to look at learning environment is very specifically, very specifically. And I can formulate my research question and I can collect the data and I then can analyze the data and then I can make a decision or make a kind of discussion about how to change their learning environments how to enrich learning environments with the different types of ideal forms to support the development of student thinking. So my research will be focused on the practical reorganization of the learning environments, just to, to bring to learning environment uh, new ideal forms and organize the interaction of their ideal and present forms of the students, because only, because only through the interaction of the ideal and primary forms, development happens. There is the only way for development is that the, the, the subject interacts with the social environment and this interaction grows as the interaction of the ideal and, and primary forms. Okay. So, uh, you need examples, of course. <laughs> okay. So I'm coming back to Vala, to my, uh, to my colleague Vala uh, Mandeli, who was studying the uh, development of English speech of Saudi primary children. You see, you see uh, the, uh, yeah, what she did, she discovered uh, 
what are the ideal forms? What are the ideal forms in the learning environment of Saudi primary school children studying English? And how the ideal forms are interacting with the primary forms to support the development of their English speech. And this is the example of the typical uh, uh, situations during the class. Look, they are, they are in dialoguing the croquant and, and the fork. And what they did, they read the text. They are just playing out. It's like, yeah, it's a very good activity, but it does not develop their speech. Look at this. What is highlighted by red color is the child's uh, primary form. What do you think if in a, in a communication with the teacher, the child says green, eat, yes, great, friends, happy, that's it. Is there any interaction of the primary form and ideal form? Not at all. Just repeating some simple words like green, eat, yes, great, friends, happy. And if there is no interaction of the primary and ideal, and there, if there is no ideal, there is no interaction, there is no conditions, there is no development. Nothing supports development of children's English speech here. And if nothing supports the development of their speech, there will be no development of their English speech. <laughs> and there is no. Coming to Eve, my next example. We are not saying goodbye to Eve, she's lovely, no? Okay. Uh, ideal form. So in this story, Eve, Eve, uh, was a core researcher. She, she selected the ideal form for her. Um, once in the morning, when they came to the kinder, uh, the, mom, the mom, the mom of Eve tells a story that uh, during the, um, the morning in the car coming to the center, they were listening to the story of three little pigs from the radio. And Eve was so interested in that story. She was listening very attentively. She was so enthusiastically listening to the story. And she started to, to reproduce the story, to repeat the story, to tell the story to the friends, but she could not. She could not. Her, 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 her story about Rita Pix was not, it was like, like the story about her monkey. But she was so motivated to tell the story, but she could not. And we decided to use this as a carrier of the ideal form. And we decided to create a special conditions, experimental genetic method for Eve to help her to develop her storytelling uh, ability to the level that she will be able to tell the story about Little Pigs, quite a complex story. And uh, not only this story, but any kind of story which is as complex as this one. So we were not focusing on reproducing the story of the pigs. We were focusing on the developing of Eve's ability to tell long and complex stories uh, in general, to her storytelling uh, capacities, using this as an example, OK? Uh, I don't think you need to, I need to tell you the whole story about Three Little Pigs. Do you remember the plot? Okay. Is there anyone who has no idea about what a Three Little Pigs story is about? Okay. Okay, good. Okay. So, you see how difficult, uh, how complex the uh, ideal form is. So there are characters, three little pigs and the wolf, four characters. Uh, and they all are different. 
they speak different words. So then the process of building of houses is a quite a complex because there were three different materials, straw, sticks, bricks. The time of building the houses was different, short time, medium amount of time, long time, and how easy it was to build a house, the light to carry, hard and the hard. And then the words which, which are repeating all the time, uh, the involves, uh, words are little big, little big, let me in. And the answer is not by, by, by hair of my chin, 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 I will not let you in. And then Wolf says, oh, I huff and puff your house down, right? So, and then the actions, huffing, puffing down, and then the results that two first the house is destroyed and the last one protected. So it's a kind of complex story which requires a uh, speech might be developed. Then memory, you have to, you have to keep in memory the, 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 the order of actions, the words, how the plot goes down. Then uh, thinking, because you have to uh, understand the relations between the materials and how long it was to, to build and how easy to destroy. You see the complexity of how psychological functions are working together. Perception, memory, thinking, uh, 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 imagination, yeah, uh, and even will, volition. Okay, and this is the complex. This is a systemic character of high psychological functions. So, but we did not come directly to this story. What we did, we applied. Uh, so this is this is the ideal form. So we applied the, the next principle, the principle of the developmental tools. Let's leave it for a while. The principle of developmental tool means that. Uh, the child development is a transition from mediated, from non-mediated to mediated uh, 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 higher psychological functions from um, well non-cultural or spontaneous uh, forms of behavior into the cultural mediated forms of behavior. So from non-mediated to mediated forms types of activities. This is the uh, this is what we call the uh, qualitative reorganization, qualitative change, because mediated activity is qualitatively different from non-mediated. So, and therefore, uh, we wanted to we wanted to give Eve a sort of um, tools she can use to master her behavior of telling a story. And uh, so, these are some ideas from Vygotsky about the importance of introducing the sign, but I'm aware of time, that's why I skip it. But I will just send you a reminder. So uh, the first example of um, using external signs and which are becoming internal tools is the example which everybody understands. So the counting with fingers, right? At certain level of, at certain age, children are learned to count using fingers. How the American children and then adults are counting by fingers. They are using like this, one, two, three, four, five. They are opening their fingers. Do you know how Russians do this? They're closing the fingers, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> but despite the cultural differences, this way or that way is counting with fingers. And instead of this, children are counting with fingers. And then what happens? They begin they begin to count in without fingers, just as if the fingers are there in their mind. So this is a transition from external tools into the internal. I don't think you need a, 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 from me a, a longer story about that. 
but I can I can give you a second example. What is this? Huh? Where are your voices? Uh -huh. What is this? Hi. 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 Oh, wow. You are great. You are great. Okay. Can you remember this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now close your eyes and 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 write on the paper. Quite difficult task, right? Hmm. Imagine you are a child. Okay, no problem. Let's make it easier. Can you remember this? Do you see the link between the pie and this sentence? May three, I one, have four, a one, large five, container nine, of two, coffee seven. This is the, <laughs> this is the cultural tool which helps us to remember the order of digits in the pie. Instead of remembering directly, we are remembering indirectly using this uh, meaningful sentence as a tool to memorize the pi digits and to remember the pi digits. We don't need to remember the pi digits anymore. We only need to remember the sentence, may I have a large container of coffee, which is much better much easier to remember than the number and the order of digits in a pie. This is how it works. This is how the external tool reorganizes our process of memorizing. This is what we did for Eve. The first, we invited Eve to build the story together. Do you remember? Bards of development are here. We started from bards. We are what? We were building a story together using the uh, little ducks, the puppet ducks. It was a story about three ducks coming to the zoo, coming back to mom, mommy duck, and their, and their discussions and so on. So we started from the bards of development ability of Eve to create the story together with teachers and other children. Then we changed the, 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 the tools uh, from, the, from the ducks into the um, mobile. Mobile is a kind of abstract things, but uh, we, wanted, we wanted Eve to, um, to play out the story and accompany the story by words. And this is what happened. You see what happens is that uh, that uh, if uh, first speaks something and then acts. Okay, you see, in yellow is what Eve is saying, in red what Eve is doing. What does it mean? It means that her speech goes before the action. It means that she is not well in using uh, external science, external tools to support their speech. And therefore, she needs uh, support from the teacher. You see the teacher, the researcher is actively involved, involved in this situation. So then we continued. But look, we did not say anything about three little things. We are developing different kinds of stories. And then finally, we, come, we are coming to the last principle of sustainable results. And the principle of sustainable result means that should, they should remain for quite a long time. 
if you are creating something which disappears in the, in, a, in a three days, it's not a real experiment. And uh, to demonstrate the principle of sustainable res results, I'm coming to the concept of the neo formation. And neo formation is, as you know, uh, something new which appears in the child during the process of development. So, and at the end, at the end of the experimental study, we wanted Eve to tell us a story about the three little pigs. But uh, our story uh, of three little pigs was um, okay. We invited a teacher to make a provocation. The teacher's role was to to take Eve away from the track of the story to suggest her a different way of telling the story in order to check is if strong enough to keep the plot the story not to not to forget anything in the story is if really um, does if really have a new qualitatively new uh, system of organization of her psychological functions which keeps which helps her to keep to keep telling the story in a in a in the right way so and these are the these are the uh, two um, how to say okay on the left that was something at the beginning what we had at the beginning you see um, you see on the left that eve is answering the questions which is very similar as Saudi children saying, yeah, yes, green, gray, <laughs> something like that, right? Okay. But at the end of the experiment, at the end of the experiment, on the right, what you see on the red is if, if is telling the story with the minimal support of the teacher. Yeah? She feels quite comfortable in telling the story, even more. In our experimental study, we suggested the teacher to destroy the story, telling that, uh, well, if no, the first, the first house was built and then destroyed, and then the second house was built and then destroyed. And he said, no, 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 that's not like that. So. Uh, he was able even to correct the teacher if the teacher moves to the wrong lots, uh, uh, wrong way, the story the wrong way. So, and this data shows that uh, once we presented, once we created a cultural tools for development for Eve, and then she internalized the tools, and the tools help her. To keep, to keep the whole story in her mind. So we have developed the experimental conditions to improve the ability of telling stories, not only about three little pigs, because now um, Eve is able to rem is able to remember and reproduce uh, any story of uh, of this level of complexity easily. And this remains forever, <laughs> so it will not disappear. So that's a kind of examples of uh, of the research of the principles of genetic research methodology. And as my time is over, I'm just uh, saying. Uh, I mean, I mean, just a summary. The summary is that genetic research methodology is a very interesting approach, and um, mm, it shows, it demonstrates uh, in the research that we can do things. And it's very, very interesting. And um, well, I just want to invite you to join the, the group who is working and applying the general principles and the um, concrete principles of genetic research methodology to educational and psychological studies. Uh, I know it was too complex for you today, but as I said at the beginning, 
uh, we are just giving you some directions and seeds, creating zone of proximal development. Um, all your questions and commentaries, please welcome. We have half an hour yet. Yes, do we? Yes, yeah. we have half an hour. Okay, we have half an hour for discussion. I, I didn't have time to check the chat. Oh, wow, in chat there are a lot of... Yeah, our email... Uh, okay, email okay, email. so... Um, well, thank you for thank you for your uh, attention. And uh, now we have uh, half an hour for discussion. Are we? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, I've sent you a direct message of all the questions. Ah. Yeah. So the first one is from Amando. What is mm -hmm. the similarity between the concepts of nature and the genesis? Or maybe I'll send to everyone so we can view them. Similarity between the concepts of nature and genesis. Armanda, I might, I, I'm afraid I might misunderstand you, but nature, nature is the nature. So, well, but genesis is the process of, 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 of development of something. How this something appears and how it grows and how it develops. Sometimes okay. people, yeah, but sometimes people say that this is a nature of, of things, okay? But uh, mm, uh, development is more the process. Uh, nature is a characteristic, okay? And development is a process, process also. I should say that. Okay. Okay, thank you. Oh, no, no problem. No problem. Okay. Any other? Any other? Any Jenny, other? Yeah, Janet's question. Could uh, the language associated with the subject of science in school also be approached in this way? I think it means speech and communication, uh, students' speech and communication. In addition to the glossaries, diagrams, increase the shared verbal expression. Oh, oh. Um, can you copy to the because as I said, I'm not feeling completely okay today. Can you oh. copy copy this to the uh, chat? Because I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Already put in the chat. Uh, could the language ah could the language associated with the subject of science in schools also be approached in this way? In addition to glossaries, diagrams, increase the shared verb. Yes, of course. If the task if the task is to study how. Uh, how the children are using are using their speech in explaining the science science subjects might be yeah yeah because, then yeah mm -hmm. Katrina yeah. I'd like to ask about ethics of creating collisions yeah this is a, of course definitely the ethical ethical issue here but uh, we are not uh, creating the dangerous collisions or the, the drama and drama in the, in the sense that it's a kind of tragedy or trauma. For example, for example, like a form of drama might be uh, this, some situation happens during the role play or in the play world. For example, uh, for example, we have a message from the wizard that we need to solve the task to, 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 to find the treasure or to save the princess. But we cannot because it's a, quite a complex and children are now becoming a little bit dramatically charged saying ah we need to ah we cannot so it's a kind of intellectual challenge so to say well which is uh, which is awesome well no we are not um, making any dangerous situations for children and psychological psychological or emotional so of course it's under control but on the other hand you are right you are right and in gen generalizing your question uh, i should say that conflict might be a danger Conflicts might be a danger in, in general, but conflicts uh, are the opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Could I just um, contextualize my question? So I realize I'm coming from a different field. And mm -hmm. so, but this was, thank you for this um, talk. It was wonderful. It was brilliant. Um, so I'm coming from a different field and I was just wondering because I'm teaching Japanese students formal debate so mm -hmm. that is a kind of ritualized conflict and there's a lot going on in the intercultural literature 
um, saying that Japanese ways of communicating, um, they avoid any kind of conflict. So that's why I asked you about the ethics of that, because I'm asking them to um, uh, conflict with each other. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe it's a question that uh, I can ask a different time. I just, that's what was in my head. How can I ask them to do something culturally that they don't do? Uh, in your own lang language. Yeah, but, um, yeah, but, um, Katerina, please, uh, don't try to directly apply these principles to your students because these are experimental principles for doing a psychological uh, research. So it, it's a, these are for researchers, <laughs> for, the, for, the for the creating their own individual research questions and experimental design. Of course, they are adaptable. And if you, if you are interested to make a research about that, so we can meet them and we, we, can, we can create together your uh, research uh, program. Uh, and and you, don't, you don't definitely, no, not, it's not necessary, you should take the principle of the collision. Oh, I'm, no, because I'm using dialogic linguistics from Bakhtin, um, the collision is, kind of ne necessary. Yeah. No collision is yeah, kind of necessary, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a way for them to, you know, by actually really communicating with me to mm -hmm. put their own point of view across. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. creates genuine um, communication. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, this, this was so um, wonderful for me. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. So, <laughs> I'm serious, thank oh. you. Okay, no interaction between either agile primary form, but from second mm -hmm. language acquisition theory, comprehensible and the case opportunity for acquisition. Would we go skip this if is this? Uh, active receptive understanding is not enough. Oof. Oof. No Sorry. interaction, no interaction between ideal and primary form, but from second language acquisition theory. Comprehensible input creates opportunity for acquisition. Ah, yeah, okay. Well, from the from the second language acquisition theory, uh, this is the theory uh, uh, I had no idea about. Okay. That's why I cannot comment. Uh, I prefer not to comment things I don't know. Yeah. But uh, but for from psychological point of view, from cultural historical point of view for development of every high psychological function, memory, thinking, speech, there is no other way than interaction of the ideal and present forms. Because the source of development is a social environment. Social environment is the source of development. And in a social environment, there are ideal forms interacting with which uh, the child can develop his individual higher psychological functions. No mm -hmm. interaction, no development. Yeah. But the difference between speech development and language acquisition mm -hmm. means that we can, well, you know these stories about people who can, uh, can, some people know the language, but they cannot communicate. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the story about that. On the other hand, we know the stories when the children and the families are coming to the different country and children are the first who begin to speak their language, the new language very quickly. Why? Nobody teaches them. This is a table. This is a table. This is a sun. This is a... Why? Because they have to, co they are, they have to communicate with their other children. And through, and through communication, they they very quickly develop their speech because they don't, they don't learn words by words. What is sun, what is grass, what is trees? They need to communicate. They need to create an utterance. They need to produce a meaningful, meaningful messages to each other. And they listen to meaningful messages. They are listening, not separate, separate words, but they, need, they listen to phrases. And then they, so, and this is the kind of meaning making, meaning making communicative process, which develops their, uh, their speech, because speech is not the producing of single words. 
speech is a meaningful communication. Yeah. Um, okay. It's just because for um, pedagogy, we're supposed to supply an efficient and effective way for them to acquire the language. Yeah. I mean, that's our job. So I was just wondering um, if the Saudi teachers, could there be any improvement to what she was doing? Um, apart, any no. way to elicit more than green or more than happy? Sorry, that's just what I was thinking about. No. Um, when when you, I was comparing what was done with Eve and what the, was done with the Saudi children. So thank you. Oh yeah, uh, well, uh... The idea of Vala was to uh, introduce a new practices uh, to classes. For example, if the topic is shopping, for example, okay, mm -hmm. the first teacher might give the students a CD or the, the video about the vocabulary of shopping, like size, money, how much I want to buy, are you selling? Da -da 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 -da. But then, then children, of course, should know the new word, terminology, vocabulary is important. And then teacher begins to play the story about how children are in England and they're coming to the to the toy shop and they need to communicate with the teacher and to each other because they need to buy something so they play out situation when when the children are, are looking at the, at the words and they are using their words these words to communicate you know? so I want to buy it what kind of toy do you want okay do you oh, la, 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 la. how much it costs so, so what is the size so this is this is this is important. This component of the lesson is important because it helps the children not only to to uh, to to remember the new vocabulary. It brings them the situation that they, they actively use this vocabulary into their in, 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 intera mm -hmm. in, interactions and dialogues, interactions, imitating shopping, shopping or restaurant or or, or medical center or, or whatever. So we are just reproducing the whole situation. When the teacher begins to play, when the teacher begins to play somebody who doesn't understand Arabic at all, and if the child needs something from the teacher, the child should speak English, even making mistakes. No problem with that. The teacher says, oh, sorry, I didn't understand. Uh, do, you, do you mean this or that or that? <laughs> so, and, the children, and the children are trying, trying to improve their, their communicate, communi communi communication. So, and through this, they are developing their speech. So if they're saying something wrong, the teacher says, oh, sorry, I didn't understand. What, what's the point? Or, or, or things like that. So that was the suggestion for Lala, using the ideal forms, but then organize the process of, the, of, of communication, the interaction of the ideal and present forms. And this is the only way, according to Vygotsky, this is the only way for speech development. Well, so there are two combinations of language acquisition and speech development go together. Mm -hmm. So, because of course, uh, language acquisition is important. You, you should know the language, right? You should know uh, that the, the, the vocabulary mm -hmm. and the grammar. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Here you go. Here you go. Yeah. You have questions. Yes. Uh, I'm just a question about the because can voc voc vocabulary. Uh, why um, Vygotsky use uh, the word ideal form? That's a, uh, that's Diego. It's a very interesting. It's a very interesting question. Uh, well, I, thanks. I, I have I have my I have my own theory about that, but uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure it's a good place to share the theories. We don't know. We just don't know. He just says it. Let's. He says. He says. Let's call these developed forms ide ideal forms. Not in the sense that they are the best forms, but in the sense that they are the forms which the child is expected to reach at the end of of his or her development. Okay. Uh, because if the mom speaks to the child with the grammatically, grammatically, linguistically, lexically developed sentences, it is expected that in three years the child will have the same level of, 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 of speech. And um, uh, uh, I don't know actually what was the reason Vygotsky said the ideal for. <laughs> mm. Ideal might, might mislead. Ideal is 
always associated with the word like ideal, the best, the best, right? Something ideal. Well, yes, I think also about the the question, uh, the fighting, uh, the idealistic and materialistic approach. Uh, so Vygotskyan in um, uh, as a Marxist and materialistic uh, psychologist, uh, uh, maybe the word uh, ideal uh, has another um, uh, meaning or risk to be misunderstood. Um, and, 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 and the second question is, I don't catch very well the differences between the first and the and the four uh, and the four uh, and the third principle because the ideal forms, in my understanding, uh, it's very similar to the buds or to the flower to the fruit fruit. So it's mm, uh, uh, why in the other principle are very different and mm -hmm. tell us a different way to understand the development, the principle of buds, the principle of the interaction of ideal form and the real form, it seems very similar, almost the same things. Yeah, uh, yes, dear, you, you are right. Uh, well, they are, they, all five principles are related. If you look at all five, you see that, that they are very, very related, and I separated. Um, it's not. Um, it's not me. And Vygotsky, I think, separated these two things differently because bars, bars are more about um, the uh, higher psychological functions which are distributed between between the oh. between the environment and uh, the, and the and the child. But ideal forms are. Uh, more on uh, what the environment, so the environmental side of 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 the body of development. Oh. Uh -huh. Because if uh, if the child communicates with the mom, mom has already developed speech. The child is developing speech, and the child's speech is developing. So and interaction of the ideal and real is one point but what happens with the child from the from the child side is when the bud becomes the fruit this is the principle of buds when the buds becomes the fruit uh, but uh, from the mother's side the ideal form does not change it still remains the same so the changes mm -hmm. of, of buds into the fruits goes from the child's side right not from the mom's okay. side. So mom still keeps the ideal form. So, and this is the difference. So of course okay. they, are, they are very closely connected, but, but the, the most interesting point is that when the child reached the point, mm -hmm. reached the point, she discovers that this ideal form doesn't exist anymore. There is an, another ideal form in front of him. Because okay, there's- so so, different perspective. Yeah, the same yeah. principle. The same yeah, 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 yeah. So if you look from the from the child point of view, it is a transition of the bud into the fruit. If you look from the environment point of view, is a, a, a number of various ideal forms. Some of the ideal forms interact with the child. Others are not interacting with the child because, for example, the child, the child, the, the small child is communicating with the mom. Mom speaks to the child. At the same time, the child, the, 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 the there is a radio or TV. TV program and this ideal form because the TV program is in use and this is not interesting. In, uh, the child is not interested because news is something which is so far away from him. But when the child becomes uh, older, he begins to understand the speech of the dictator from the news. So, and there are ideal forms which are around the child, but depending on their bud, there are ideal forms which interact with the child and forms which exist which exist, but they do not interact with the child's primary form. And this is the difference between the buzz of development and ideal and, and present forms. Oh, okay. Thank you. So I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not good in answering questions, especially today, but I try, I try, I try my best, Diego. Very clear. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. You convinced me. <laughs> ah, oh, good, good. Oh, at least there is somebody I convinced. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> what is the difference Noshi. between flowers and hmm? now she has a question for the reference of Yves story? It's a publication of Yves. Ah yes, yes, yes. They uh well uh we are we have uh, written a chapter about alchemy, alchemy of development, and it will be published this year. Uh, but uh, the only publication about Eve and more is in dissertation, in, in Victoria's dissertation, which is available online from Monash. Uh, and uh, this Eve story is one of the small, small piece of this huge, Mm, huge uh, research, and if you look at the at the list, oh, look at the look at the paper, pre-reading paper, which I wrote especially for you, and one of the references is to the to Victoria's dissertation, and don't be surprised because Victoria's dissertation is not about Eve, Victoria's dissertation is is about Pam, uh, about about matrix, about planning and assessment matrix, ZPD. If story is a very small, small, small piece of this big, big research. <laughs> and I just took this as an example, just to, to show you, to, to, to illustrate how the principle works. Hmm. Yeah. And Tara's question is uh, the difference between flowers and the fruits. Is that from buds to fruits is clear? and how they are distinguished from flowers. Of hmm. Yeah, I understand. So, well, fruit, fruit, flowers, buds, of course they are metaphors, okay? Well, there are no real buds, <laughs> yeah? like, uh, like on the tree. <laughs> there are no real fruits, like on like apples and so on. Uh, don't take it so directly, please. So, for me, what is important is the first stage and the last one, and the, the bud and, and, the, and the fruit, because I know that the bud, bud are outside in the child's interaction, in the, in, the, in the environment, in the social situational development. And fruit is in, within, within the child, as the child individual uh, psychological function the child can use voluntarily uh to uh organize his behavior and flower is some is something which is in between but for me it's not as important as it as this too because of the general genetic law which says that every function appears twice <laughs> okay first between the people and then within the child yeah. i know that's that's not a good answer but what intellect means in the cultural historical theory is not among higher psychological functions. Is that right? Intellect? Well, intellect means thinking. In other words, thinking. But thinking is definitely a higher psychological function. Thinking and speech is a magnum opus of Vygotsky's. <laughs> Intellectual development is ability to think. So what is intellect? Intellect is ability to understand, to analyze, yeah? to make a cognition. And this is what thinking is for. Thank you, Nicola. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I think if you have other questions, tomorrow we will have individual consultation time. And also Nicola is going to have a session and waiting for request of topic. Yeah. And really, thank you, Nikola. Especially today, you don't feel so well, but you give such. I know it's okay. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, uh, topic for today, please suggest. And there were some couple of suggestions about about possible topics, but contact organizers, uh, contact our beautiful Veronica and Sushan for your suggestions for my topic for today. I'm ready to discuss. Well about identity if you like, Pirjwani if you like, CPD if you like, so whatever, okay? Thank you very much. Now I have to leave for, for a while and join the waiting room. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Nikolai. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs> so, Thanks so much, Nikolai. Yeah.
Our next session is uh, at 1 p.m. by David Kellogg, the ped uh, pedology of adolescents. So yeah, have a good lunch break and we look forward to seeing you at 1 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.